I am. Yes. Amen. So, Amen. Happy Sunday. We're going to enjoy this beautiful, beautiful Sunday. I have a treat for you today. We've got the Columbus, Unity of Columbus, Gospel Choir. So we take that, that spirit of all is well, we take that idea, that divine idea within. We take a deep breath and affirm that all is well, and it is that great power of understanding that allows us to expand our consciousness 
to allow more good, to truly know that God is the real thing standing under every visible form of life, and within each other. God is present in this space, this sacred space we create here together. And in celebration and thanksgiving, we acknowledge and celebrate this presence by saying, thank you, God, together. Thank, thank you, God. you, God. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Again, I say good morning. Good morning. Yes, yes, yes. It is such a joy to see your bright, shining faces. And I'm so grateful. Yes. And I am so grateful for those of you joining us online. You're all a part of this community, wherever or whenever you are, God is. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it is in that spirit that we welcome you. Unity of Columbus is part of the greater spiritual movement called Unity. We are an inclusive spiritual community. And so whatever your background, your faith background or traditions, if any, you are welcome here. You are one with all life, with all that is, and with that one presence and power we call God. Remember that and carry it with you. Our mission here is with God as our source. Unity of Columbus inspires people to realize and express their divine nature in an awakening world. And you and I, dear brothers and sisters, are a part of that awakening. We hold in our highest affirmative thought the presence of pure love, and we call God the good. And in that spirit, I will speak aloud our statement of faith and invite you to repeat it after me. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, all love. Together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, all love. Let's take that statement within just for a moment. And affirm this statement silently to yourself in the quiet. And from a steady, unwavering, and unshakable faith, let us affirm together again aloud our statement of faith. Together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good, all the life. And so it is. I invite you, if you are joining us for the very first time or haven't been here in a long time, to raise your hand up high and we will make sure you get a welcome packet. <laughs> yeah. You get to a little I think I recognize everyone. Yeah, I think I recognize everyone in the room. But yes, yeah, come on down. Come on right here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we will have uh, we'll have time for fellowship, of course, next door in our Wilson Hall. So be sure to stay after. Ah, all is truly well. And today, our speaker is. Our minister, Reverend Dan Holloway, he will have an amazing meditation and message called, appropriately, Amazing Grace. You he heard Simone sing that so, so eloquently, so beautifully uh, as our prelude. And so affirming our faith, we rise in song. So I'll invite our community choir back up we'll have a congregational song that I think will sound familiar to pretty much everybody in the room. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Oh. Yes, we are only here for God. And it is in that spirit that this unity movement was founded over 130 years ago on a firm foundation of prayer. And it was first through publishing that our co-founders, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, got the word out to the rest of the country about this amazing movement called unity. Soon, this message of love, of harmony, of oneness, reached the entire planet in not much time. And the greatest means of getting the word out is our publication of the Daily Word magazine, which has been in print for 99 years. And today, we have our Daily Word, which is... Ah, Deb Pass. Come on up, Deb. I figured somebody was. I didn't see anybody moving, so I'm just like, all right. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Glad you all are here. Today's reading is wonder. I view my life through eyes of wonder. I feel the spark watching a young child discover new things. Eyes wide with hands, all in wonder. Even the smallest spirits feeling the tickling of a butterfly when the skin or blowing the seed of dandelion are marked a mark of joy. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that this was disappointing life experience chipped away as my sister are in appreciation. Today I let go of disillusionment and open my heart and my eyes to once again life in wonder. As I view life anew, I renew my belief in the goodness of life and all of people. I open myself to unexpected treasures happening all around me each day. Wonder is a precious gift, one I used to appreciate the marvel unfolding before me. This is the affirmation for the day. They were, they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Acts 3, verses 10. Thanks. That affirmation once more is I view my life through the eyes of wonder. Let's affirm that together. I view my life through eyes of wonder. Yes, it is that childlike wonder with which we see and we appreciate the all is well. The all is wellness of spirit, of omnipresence, of omniscience, of omnipotence. We are lovingly surrounded, protected, and blessed continually, perpetually through all our endeavors, all of life's complexities. God is always here. So for the remainder of our service, we'll have a lovely meditation and message from Reverend Dan Ben Moore with our Unity Community Choir. But first, let us come together in a spirit of prayer as a community. I invite you to close your eyes and be still. Unity is, as I mentioned, founded on concept of affirmative prayer. And to affirm is to make firm in one's consciousness that which is already true in spirit. One of these truths is that there is no place, no spot where God is not. That is the, the reality of omnipresence. There is nothing that can keep us from God's love, God's abundance, God's forgiveness, or God's peace. The only barrier lies within our consciousness, and it most often displays itself as fear and unforgiveness. Forgiveness is truly an act of the will. It is a choice that we can make. 
to give a gift to ourselves. To release the burdens that we may have carried in with us from our past, be it minutes or decades in the past. We can choose, as we sang earlier, to release and let go and be free through the gift and blessing of forgiveness. So I invite you to join with me in taking a deep breath You will affirm after me, I forgive and I am free. Together, I forgive and I am free. And so we are free. We are unleashing and releasing something within us just by that, that simple exercise of giving power to our thoughts through the spoken word. In that spirit of freedom and forgiveness, we turn our attention now to praying with and for others. As our prayer box comes forward, I invite you to hold in prayer all the people whose names are inside that prayer box, all the people in your life for whom you are praying, and yourselves as well. We join in heart and mind with our 24-hour prayer ministry, Silent Unity. Holding the high watch for our world, for our neighbors, for each other in this spiritual space. When we do this, we no longer see others or ourselves as tired, lost, poor, broken, or sick. We see, rather, through the eye of spirit from the perspective of pure light that is the Christ within us. And when we do this, we know ourselves and our beloveds and those we pray for <coughs> as whole, perfect, complete beings in spirit. We can never be fragmented or apart from God because we are all a part of God. <coughs> And so I invite you to picture each person for whom you are praying with a light in their hearts, with a smile upon their countenance, seeing them whole, seeing them blessed. And so that we may share that vision together, I invite you this morning to speak the names of those for whom you pray today aloud. Precious Spirit, we know that you answer all prayer when we pray affirmatively as we do here. We know and trust that the answer is always yes. And it is in that trust that we release and we let go. We trust in God and allow the perfect outworking of that for which we pray be made manifest that which is already true in spirit and we are grateful for this opportunity to pray to be to dwell in unity and in love with the Christ presence that is within us and all around us and it is in that spirit we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen and amen. I invite you to simply relax into your seats and ah, just be as we prepare for the day.
of meditation to focus on your breathing, breathing in deeply and releasing and letting go. We prepare to go within to this time of listening, of hearing the word of God, the ideas, the feeling of God in our lives. We begin as always by relaxing the physical body to become more aware of the spiritual nature of being. We feel the calm move through us from head to toe, relaxing every cell, every muscle, every tissue of our physical body. And this calm moves through us, step by step, moment by moment, moving through the face and jaw and neck, into the shoulders, up and down the back, adjusting and aligning. Into the arms and hands and fingers. With every breath, we are more at peace. Mm, it feels so good to relax this way. The calm continues to move through us, through the chest and abdomen, into the hips, and thighs, and knees, and calves, ankles, feet, and toes. With every breath, we are more at peace, more aligned with the activity of spirit, the activity of God in our lives. If there are areas in your physical body in need of healing, we breathe in the healing light and love of God it fills every cell of our being. It brings a divine intelligence to every cell of our body. Healing and wholeness are natural. We open to guidance and we ask that simple question, God, what is mine to do? What is mine to do to bring about wholeness and healing? How can I let go of concern or worry and allow your natural wholeness to be expressed in, through, and as me. As we let go, we let God be God in every part of our physical body. If there are areas in your life that are in need of healing, finances, relationships, work, whatever it is, breathe in that healing light and love of God. And then go within to listen. What are you being guided to do? 
Is there an opportunity for seeing things differently? An opportunity for forgiveness? Is there an opportunity that comes to you as a divine idea? This is grace happening in your life. Grace is always seeking to happen in your life. It is the unearned love and activity of God. It is always available. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to be anyone special to receive the grace of God. What you want to do to receive this grace of God is simply be open to it, to be in a place of gratitude for all that you do have. And not to limit how that grace will show up because grace can show up in the most amazing ways, ways you do not expect, ways that can surprise you. The love of God is not limited in any way. So we breathe in. We feel that wholeness, that healing in all ways through this light, love, creative nature of God. And as we exhale, we let go any doubt, any fear, any worry or concern. We remember that we can never be any place where God is not. That love, that life, that light, that wholeness is always available to us. We do not limit God by suggesting how circumstances need to change for us to know God more. We give over any feeling of need, of insistence, of resistance. Rather, we move to a place of pure acceptance. We deserve our good. We are here to be channels of God, conduit of God. We do that through our kindness, our compassion, our generosity, our service, our love, our light, our joy, our creativity. And then we simply open to the grace of God that can show up at any time, anywhere, any way. We are one with God. God is one with us. We live in gratitude as we open up to this activity of God. It's a matter of being a spiritual detective, really just looking for the good, and you will find what you look for. Let us Focus once again on our breathing, breathing in deeply ah, and releasing and letting go, letting our conscious awareness come up behind our closed eyes. And as they open, we bring ourselves to this place, this point in time. Yet we remain in prayer, in conscious God awareness, always looking for and finding the love of God in expected and in unexpected ways. This is grace. We pray after the nature of the indwelling Christ's presence and in great gratitude, we say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Grace can come from unexpected sources at unexpected times and in unexpected ways. Back in the late 1800s, Alexander III was Tsar of Russia. He repressed many people and especially persecuted the Jewish people. His wife, Maria, though, was known for her soft and caring heart. Alexander once had an order put to a prisoner in exile for life. The order said, pardon impossible to be sent to Siberia. Maria ostensibly saved that prisoner by simply moving the comma in the order. Rather than saying pardon impossible to be sent to Siberia, it then said pardon 
impossible to be sent to Siberia. He went free. Grace shows up in so many ways. It can show up as a divine idea. Have you had one of those ideas that just seemed to come out of nowhere? And you just knew it was right? Maybe this happens with me. It happens sometimes when I least expect it. In the middle of the night, I'll wake up with an idea. Or I'll have an idea come to me in the shower or as I take off to drive someplace. I have a divine idea. I just know it has a feeling about it that is very pure and exciting. Maybe grace has shown up in your life as a forgiveness, a forgiveness received or a thought of forgiving another person. Maybe it is a way forward when there doesn't seem to be any way forward, when you felt stuck, you felt trapped, and then suddenly, either through another person or through an idea, a uh, shift in your circumstances, things changed. Maybe you had grace come to you in the form of guidance or a new perspective or a serendipity, an experience that was seemingly a coincidence, but you knew that there is something more to it. Grace saves us from the full measure of our mistakes. Unity minister and author Eric Butterworth said in the book, Celebrate Yourself, it is true that as you sow, so do you reap. And yet, God's desire to express completely through you and as you is so great that you never completely reap the harvest of error and you always reap more good than you sow. This is grace. Margaret Pounder says in The Laws of Love that grace has nothing to do with anything that anyone else has ever done nor with any outward activity on our part. Grace is an inner realization that we are already one with God. We always have been. We always will be. That the only separation is a false belief in our own mind. So it is an inner realization that we are always one with God. I want to share with you what grace is not. Grace is not something that is bestowed on you because you are more special to God than somebody else. It's not bestowed on somebody else because they are more special to God than you. We have heard that phrase, there but for the grace of God go on. I think that can be misused. The grace of God is not given to you so you can't be that homeless person in the street. Grace is unearned love of God, and it's available to everybody. Seeing others in need is not the grace of God in your favor. It may well be the opportunity for you to be the grace of God in their life. See, grace not only comes to you from God, but it comes through you as an activity of God. You can be the grace in somebody else's life where they were thinking that they were despondent, hopeless, helpless, and suddenly through whatever circumstances, you are there to be grace in their life. So don't be thinking there, but for the grace of God, go I. God's grace is available to all. Now, there are ways that we can block grace. We can hinder grace. We do that through negative thinking, through judging by appearance. When we get stuck in looking at whatever's going on in life and making judgments about it, we are limiting grace. We need to step back, open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds to see the grace of God always working in our lives. What I love is when it sometimes comes in ways I could not possibly expect. And that's when I feel 
and I know that it is the grace of God. It's a shift. It's a sudden awareness. But we can seemingly block it or hinder it through negative thinking or through judgment or through ingratitude, not being grateful. I've said before so many times that gratitude is a spiritual energy and it's a magnetism. When we are grateful, we are magnetizing the ethers, the universe, to bring to us more to be grateful for. Ingratitude is kind of like a block to all of that. It keeps it from coming to our awareness, even if it's available, because we're so stuck in looking at what's not working. We're focused on what we do not want rather than focusing on what we do want and what we have. Or maybe we are blocking grace through the insistence of an even exchange. I've had people who have been introduced to tithing. Tithing is giving a certain portion. Often it's suggested as 10% of whatever we receive back to where we receive our spiritual good. And that could be any place. But people who have learned this have sometimes used it as a measurement of the activity of God in their lives. They have an insistence of even exchange. If I tithe, I will get this back. In other words, they're giving to get rather than letting it be an energy that's a natural energy that moves through them as them, as, as love, as joy, as service. So we don't want to hinder or block grace in our lives by insisting that we get something back. In other words, what I share with people is count your blessings. Yes, count your blessings, but don't compare totals. You want to open your heart, your eyes, your mind. Back in the 1700s in England, John Newton was a slave trader. Early on, he was conscripted into the Royal Navy, and he did not like that. He attempted to desert, and he received eight dozen, 96 lashes for that. Later on, he served on a slave trading ship, and in a violent storm, he prayed to God that they would survive. He didn't think they were going to make it. But a sudden shift in the cargo covered up the hole in the ship to keep it from sinking. He took this as a sign from God, and he converted to Christianity. He became a minister. Many years later, he wrote Amazing Grace, which shares that forgiveness and redemption can be given no matter what the trans transgressions. He also wrote a pamphlet called Thoughts Upon the Slave Trade. He lobbied for the end of slavery, and it was ended by 1807. And he lived to see that happen. And he died in December of that year. Well, we have an idea of what grace can look like. This unexpected, unearned love of God showing up as circumstances, as people, as ideas, and in so many ways. We've also just shared some of the ways that we block that or hinder it anyway by insisting that it has to be showing up in a certain way or just not believing that we deserve it. There's so many ways that we keep grace from us. Well, let me put it a different way. We keep our awareness of grace from us because it's always available. But here's some ways that you can actually increase the experience of grace. First of all, open to see that all things are working together for your good. That's tough sometimes because we have circumstances that don't look good at all. They happen in our lives. We have an accident or an illness. We get caught up in, in circumstances that seem to be terrible. The scripture does not say that everything is good. But from Romans 8.28, 
as I share so often, we read all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those who love God, who love love, because God is love. Being called according to God's purpose is just aligning yourself by being open to the guidance to express as much of God as you can, because the purpose of God is to move through us, as us, as light, love, joy, creativity, wholeness, healing, in so many different ways. As we open to that, then we become the conduit for the God energy, the conduit for grace. All things are working together for good. For those who are called according to God's purpose, who love God, Many years ago, I was called to transitional ministry. And so I went through classes and learned to be a transitional minister. And I was also called to different churches almost right away. One of those was in Jacksonville, Florida. Now at the time, my wife was going through ministerial school. So it was just me and Brenna. Brenna is the Bernese mountain dog that we had for so many years and loved so much. Well, Kathy was up at Unity Village in Kansas City area. And I was down in Jacksonville, Florida with the dog. And I had to find a place to live. I looked around at so many places. A lot of them did not allow for dogs. And then some of them were going to cost a lot of money. Well, Kathy was going through school, so she didn't have any money. She was costing money to go through school and to live up in Unity Village area. So I had to find something that was affordable, that could work, that would allow me to have my dog. I walked into the Jacksonville church just to see if anybody could point me in certain directions where they knew that people were renting an apartment or a house, or something where we could live. And there was somebody who was working there as a volunteer, putting some folders away. And they said, I'm not sure, but I have an idea of something that might be a help to you. Let me get back to you tomorrow. Let me have your number, and I'll give you a call. And she checked, and she had some friends who were about to take off on a boat going all the way up to uh, New England on the intercoastal causeway. And they had this sailboat that they were going to live on. But they needed somebody to take care of their house while they were gone, just to check the mail and to make sure that the house was safe. They said, if you will just check our mail and keep the house safe, you can stay there at no cost at all. And you can have your dog too. Out of the clear blue sky, this grace was given. This beautiful situation happened and I was there for a year and a half. We don't know where grace is coming from. We can't deal it into our lives in certain ways. We can always be in prayer. We can be in openness to the possibility of grace we can be in that place that says, I don't know how and where this is going to work out, but I can trust that it will in some form or some fashion. It's going to work out. And then I'm open. I draw to me my good by focusing on all the good that I already have in my life. And still, sometimes it can be such a shocking surprise, such a positive change such a joy, such a relief. And that's what can happen as we open to the grace of God in our lives. We open to see things differently, to see things positively, not negatively. Maybe the thing that seems to be negative to you, if you step back and look at it, there might be some seeds of positivity to it, something to learn from. Remember, Grace can come from unexpected sources at unexpected times and in unexpected ways. There was a time 
when my wife fell very ill and so much so that we had to go to the emergency room. She was worried that she might have like a kidney stone. Kidney stones can be very painful, as some of you may know. But she did not have a kidney stone. It was much more than that. But because she thought she had a kidney stone, and we went to the emergency room, they took some pictures and found that she had a tumor on her kidney. She had kidney cancer. Now, that sounds terrible, but it wasn't really as terrible as it could be because the cancer was localized to the kidney. It was large. They had to remove the kidney, but when they did, they removed the cancer immediately, totally. So what looked like a painful possibility, a painful experience, kept her from having that cancer develop and grow and metastasize to the rest of her body. And she is living well with one kidney today because of that grace that happened. We need to be open to see things differently, to see things positively, not negatively. Notice your divine ideas. Open up to the possibility of a way forward when there seem to be none. Listen to your guidance and believe with your heart, your mind, your very soul that all things are working together for good. Even if you cannot see it right now, we are always one with God. We can never be any place where God is not. Open your eyes your mind, your heart, to amazing grace. God bless you. Jaziana, we say that. What we say, y'all? Yes, yes, I, I can. <laughs> this song is written by uh, Timothy McAfee Lewis, okay? It's a fun one, so please follow your heart and listen to the spirit of the song.
Say it again. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Amen. Amen. And now is the time of our service where we eat, where we bless the gift of our treasure and all that we give in our time, talent, and treasure is multiplied always. So I will speak our offering blessing. And as you prepare your love offerings, just know that this ministry is lovingly supported by your tax deductible tithes, gifts, and love offerings. And we are so grateful for all that you give and all that you can be and can do. So I'll speak this blessing and invite you to repeat it. Divine love as me, together. Divine, Divine love as me. Blesses and multiplies. Blesses and multiplies. All that I am. All that I am. All that I have. All that I have. All that I give. All that I give. And all that I receive. And all that I receive. And I am grateful. And I am grateful. Amen. Special shout out, I say welcome home to Terry Immel Hines, who's in the back. <laughs> I'll invite you to just love on that lady after we after we conclude here today and just um, just let her know how much she is beloved and appreciated. The laws of grace are in effect always. She's a living example of it. And we as a ministry are a living example of it. We're so grateful that always we are supported in this journey. Even when we don't think it's there, even when we can't necessarily see it with our physical eyes, spirit sees. God is. And it is in that gratitude that I give thanks for Reverend Dan for his amazing message and loving support of this mission. And a 
special round for Simone Johnson, Jaziana Chalet, and, yes, and the Unity Community Gospel Choir. Yes. I got just a couple of announcements. Next week, a week from today, after service will be our annual picnic, and we will have a couple of main dishes, but side dishes are appreciated. Or you can just come and bring yourself, bring your appetite. Bring a friend, definitely, because there's always plenty of food at our annual picnic. August 6th is the date, and that is also the birth date of our co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore. And so we will have Janet and Lisa Essenfree. That will be our guest musicians coming up from Kentucky to be with us. So we have... Um, well, I'll just say the word's getting out about this ministry and all the beautiful things that are happening here. And you are all a part of that, a vital, active part and participant of that unfolding. The midweek renewal continues this week, finding yourself in transition. Come and see me with information about that. Uh, this Tuesday, our SEE series on Foundations of Unity continues. See Julian Henson, licensed Unity teacher, in the back about that. And I have one more announcement that I'll share with you. Those of you who have or know someone who has young ones, children and teens, we are openly accepting reser or not register registration. I was going to say reservations. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel Unity, right? Um, <laughs> We are accepting registration for our Youth and Family Program, which will be starting this fall. And so all throughout August, so starting today and all through August, uh, you can register your kid or kids. And we are so blessed and so grateful uh, that we have children in this ministry that we can serve now. Such a, such a joy. Such a joy. As a matter of fact, that's such a long distance. No, I can't believe my children, but we're all children of God. So for all the children of the world, we have this unity blessing that I'll invite you to repeat after me. Rubbing your hands together, getting that kinetic energy of pure love going between the palms of your hands. S sending that love out into the room and to the world. We bless all the children of this world. If you will affirm after me, we love you. We love we you. Bless you. We bless you. We truly appreciate you. We truly appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. And we behold the Christ in you. Just as you are. Just as you are. Amen. And if we will uh, all stand and we will affirm the prayer for protection. I think everybody in the room knows it, so I won't do a call and response. Ah, so just taking a deep breath and just taking in all that we've received and all that we have contributed to today's service and to this ministry. We affirm for one another the spirit of unity and love together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. And so when we open ourselves to divine understanding and of grace, we will truly know peace on earth. Feel free. To sing with us, to join hands if you're comfortable doing so, as we close, let there be peace on earth.
God's will for me is absolute good. Together. God's will for me is absolute good. And I am held in the hands of grace. And I am held in the hands of grace. And so it is.